Welcome to sports, everybody. The New Providence Softball Association's Best of Seven Championship Series continuing last night at the Blue Hill Sporting Complex. Our Charles Fisher was at the park, and he tells us if the Lady Hitman can have overcome an 0-1 advantage going into Game 2 against the Bomber G operators. A picture-perfect crowd at the ballpark for two good games. Lady Hitman starting with the younger Ashanti Dawan as she had the operators off strike. Hit by the operators and the inexperience of the Lady Hitman starting to show. The Lady Hitman played themselves right out of this game. Crucial base running error here. Wasn't much help even the short-handed Taylor Johnson having the jitters. And just like that, the Boomer G operators would take advantage of the rookies. The lead for a zip, Taylor Johnson in, and guess what Latira Brown says? Welcome to the game, buddy. A slap to right field, and two runners would come across. Next batter, a looper to second base. Dropped, and another run comes across. Operators were sure glad to see Taylor because they operated on her surgically for six runs, Put this one in the bag. The Boomer G operators take the game 10 to zip and they now hold a commanding two zip lead in the best of seven series. Well, I know I had to come out here and pitch playing strikes and that's what I did. My team was there to back me up. We focus. We, we know what our goal is. We know what our mission is. And we set, we set out to do the things that we need to do. We came out tonight and they were expecting Taylor, but they started Ashanti. And she had them off with the slow pitching. You know, we were able to score four runs off her. Then Taylor came and we got six runs in the last two innings. You know, which shows that, you know, once we put our heads together and our pitcher pitched a, a great game tonight, we hit and we did the things that we needed to do. We were doing good for the first few innings, first five innings, I think, and my, I'm a young pitcher, my arm started to hurt, I guess, and I wanted to go to my stronger pitcher, now see more senior pitcher Taylor, but I guess they were able to make contact better with her and work practically negative with us. The uh, bat was a little uh, late. We had some batters get hang up on base, couldn't get them in. Hey, that happens. We'll be interesting to see what happens when game three is played on Thursday. For ZNS Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. All right, thanks a lot, Charles. Now, in the men's feature game last night, there was a bit more offense in the series opener, but it only came from one side of the diamond. The Bomber G Truckers once again able to hold off the bats of the Dorney United Hitmen. They coasted to a 5-0 victory to take a 2-0 series lead. After escaping with a 1-0 win in Game 1, Edney the Heat Bethel once again getting the best of this pitcher's duel with Alcott Forbes. The Heat striking out 13. He allowed just three hits along the way. Forbes, meantime, finding seven in the loss on offense for the Truckers. Darren Mortimer, two for three, a run scored, an RBI. Edney helping his own cause, one for two with a double. Taran Poo Wood, Ramon Shaky Johnson, Marvin Tugi Wood, and Van Lojo Johnson, they scored a run apiece without getting a hit. Now we can tell you the game three in that series is also set for tomorrow night back at the Blue Hill Sporting Complex. Now, government school softball also on the schedule yesterday at the Blue Hill Sporting Complex, both the junior boys and junior girls on the schedule. In junior boys play, the LW Young Golden Eagles, no match for the Anatol Rogers Timberwolves. The Timberwolves win this one in convincing fashion, 16 to four. Play great, just first there's playing bad, then when they go in the second and then there's playing good. We miss a couple of balls, but we do good at the end. Second base, center field, and right field. They need to work on the catching. Also in junior boys play, the T.A. Thompson Scorpions and D.W. Davis Pitbulls involved in a high-scoring affair. The Scorpions go on to win this one, 18-10. We perform a little well. It was a little rough and bumpy. We just need a little more practice and, and a little more help. We perform good. We need a little bit more practice, but today we strive for the best. I know they was doing enough. Like, they be hard to practice, but when it comes to the game, they be slunking though. Some of the guys, they, they didn't want it to play, and they was choking on the field. And I think we need more practice. It wasn't batting too good, and they wasn't catching, and things too good. As for the junior girls, the AF Adderley Fighting Tigers had their way with the S McPherson Sharks. The Tigers go on for a 16-3 victory. I think we played good, but they need to do better on their catching. But we still come out on top. 
we had a small team, but we really didn't do how we supposed to, even though we did our best. My girls, they went wrong in their catching skills, but we're still good. We didn't go as expected, but we was we coming back hard, and we're going to try the next time. We, the girls, they was they was really nervous today, so the next time we're going to get them. We need to uh, focus and not pay attention to the crowd. We need to catch more balls, and we need to learn how to, like, not to hit at the first strike. Well, the official launch of the 2013 Carifta Track and Field Championships taking place on Saturday Pass at the Sheridan Nassau Resort. Our Julian Gibson was there. Benson sports fans can start getting excited about Carifta. The 2013 Games will take place right here in the capital. In an effort to ensure that the Bahamas' performance is as best as possible, uh, we have taken the decision to implement, as we've done in the past, our talent search. We took this opportunity with all of the coaches here from the Family Islands, Nassau, Grand Bahama and the Family Islands, some 64 coaches, that are present here for this Congress to launch the, took the opportunity to launch the talent search, utilizing the resources of all our coaches that are available. There are a number of family island athletes that are diamonds in the rough. And so we're gonna spare no effort to ensure that we capture all the available athletes to make Team Bahamas one of the best ever for these games. Now the B3As have selected a group of coaches headed by Keith Parker to conduct a talent search in the Bahamas. We want you to let us know, please, any talent that you see. We don't uh, necessarily mean ready-made javelin throwers or jumpers that are going to win medals for sure. But if you find any young athletes who have uh, the ability to throw, for example, uh, in the softball league, the people that are... Th uh, kids with uh, girls or boys with a great arm that can really throw that softball, we can. Uh, the coaches at our disposal can turn them into javelin throwers. When they have their, their training programs in Jamaica, they go to every parish. They go to every parish recruiting. And this is a message to us. We need to go to every island and every corner, identify the talent, and train it for Carifta. So from Inagua in the south to Grand Bahama and Abaco in the north, get ready. The B3s, they are looking for some track and field talent. Reporting for ZNS Total Sports, I am Julian Gibson. All right, thanks a lot, Julian. Well, a new gym is on the horizon for Harbor Island. This will be mainly because of the winter residents there, along with the Bahamas government. Dr. Daniel Johnson, sports minister, he was recently in Harbor Island, and the man behind the scenes, Andrew Tiny Johnson, gave him a virtual tour of what this facility will look like. I recommend this community now for 37 years. There's a young people. Um, I have about Sure, it only looked about 250 kids that I worked with. I just opened up a development league on Luther. I go every Saturday, every Friday and Saturday, I go to the Luther and I go from different settlements um, working with these kids. Mainland. On the mainland. Mm -hmm. Our brother and I, but I don't, they are on the practice like six, five days out of the week and we play two days, Fridays and Saturdays. And the program is going pretty good. Um, 2003, we went to the government and asked them to give us the, uh, because I've turned the whole, turn the, uh, park, turn the whole dump site into a park, which you know was granted to us at that time. We was able to um, build a, a park. In order, for, uh, for, in order for these kids now to develop much more in, in basketball, I think I said to myself, they need um, in something inside. Uh, we've been, all my life, I've been playing outdoor basketball. We, we applaud the idea of a multi-purpose gymnasium that convert to community centers. Yeah. This thing becomes a, this is a business entity for it to be sustainable. So why governments led by guys like us don't really want to get too involved in that? People don't like to pay the government to use government stuff. Right. You get me? Yeah. Whereas people come to use this for your banqueting, for this and the other, even if people want to book it for the weekend for basketball tournament, they should pay right. a setup cleaning, maintenance fee. They're not trying to make money off of it, but to keep it running, there's a cost to maintaining it. And this is what governments don't do well. Well, the relaunch of the Bahamas Lawn Tennis Association's Play and Stay program was a big hit on Saturday Pass in Rawson Square, and it showed BLTA executives that they are on the right path moving forward. This is more than we expected. We probably expected about 10 but it looks like we have about 20, 25 of their easy or probably even more. We had parents from the street just park and come over and sign their names because we have a sign-up sheet over there saying that they want to 
bring their kids out to our Naxi van. Really enjoy seeing all the young kids that come up, and even we've had you know a few that are over 10, so which is good, because anybody can play this game. I mean, the ball really makes a difference, and so. Um, you know, they're here, they, they, they seem to be having fun, we're having lots of activities, um, so it's good. And we have some kids who've been playing for a while, so, so the, the younger kids who are beginners are seeing them play and trying to emulate them or want to be as good as they are. I've seen a few kids uh, who have good eye-hand coordination and who, if they stay with the game, will, 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 will definitely have the potential to be good players. And so the high, whole idea is, you know, getting them exposed now, getting them to have some fun. Um, so that they want to play more and, and we will be making and reaching out to them to make sure that they come down to the center and train. Now on hand to show their support for the Play and State program with the sports unit at the Ministry of Education, the Bahamas Olympic Committee and the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture. It's just an example of just the limited amount of space you need. You don't need a whole big area and you know we are limited with space in schools. A lot of people have passed and said they want the kids to get involved. The people can see it's pretty safe. Um, adult is wrong as well, super wise. So I support something like this and help me get in shape. We want to ensure that in future that we have continuous streams of athletes and this is an excellent way uh, for a young person to be introduced into the sport and continue to develop. And that will do it for sports, but stay tuned, your weather forecast still to come.